Hey, what's up everyone? Your buddy Matt here. Welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna complete our Alice Chalmers fuel system overhaul. We're gonna install the carburetor, we're gonna install a new choke cable, we're gonna check the plugs, we're gonna do a whole bunch of different stuff, put the gas tank back in, make sure this thing runs. Spoiler alert, it's outside, so it did end up getting here on its own power. I really hope you enjoy this video, stay tuned. Okay, so I, um, I posted another video on rebuilding uh, this carburetor. Uh, I felt like it would be too long if I incorporated it to this one. So this is kind of where we left off in that other carb rebuild video, uh, the Zenith carburetor, fully rebuilt but not tested. But before we get it on the machine, I got a couple things I wanna do. I wanna pass a die on these, on these threads, uh, try to clean up the, 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 the parts where it rubbed because it was only holding on by one bolt on that lift. Uh, also, I wanna figure out what I'm gonna do here. This is where the fuel inlet is. And uh, I think, you know, whether or not what's original or what there, but you got this 90 degree bend, uh, and then there was a rigid line originally on the uh, forklift, it's a rigid line. I'm gonna go with flexible hose all the way to the carburetor. This is what was on there, and there was a small section of flexible hose, but I'm gonna recuperate this 90 degree and then I'm gonna put this uh, one quarter, five sixteenths barb fitting uh, in here. I think that should fit right there. So bing, put that like that. I'm gonna have it kind of faced probably a little bit downwards, like at a 45 degree angle. How about we do it like this? Uh, you know, and we'll see when that fitting, you know, when we start screwing it on up to where it kind of, if I'm already here and it's super tight, I mean, I might just be able to get it to go a little further, but we'll see. So, uh, all right, let's get, let's get that done. Let's put this barb fitting on. All right, I take out the bigger guns, vice grip and all, but I got it. So uh, let's get some of this uh, thread sealer on here on both ends. And then I don't think we're gonna be able to start it today, but wait, it's gonna be in this video. I'm just talking about today for me. So we have enough time for this thing to, to set up overnight and uh, you know, when I come back in a few days time, I'll be able to, to get it going. Don't want to put it too tight. Get this guy on here. Okay. There we go. I think we're gonna be perfect. I'll bring it up just a little more. That's it. We'll have it pointed down because this guy is kind of about, I guess, this far away from the engine block. So I don't want the hose to go up and touch against it. But if I can kind of loop it down, it'll be able to do its its 90 degree bend, but kind of at this 45 degree angle. So it'll give me a chance to to try to deviate it away from the engine. So let's give it a little bit more here. Good. Just like that. Uh, a little more. Yeah, we can tighten it up just a little bit more, I think. Good. Just like that. And I'll give you a nice loop. Just like that. Good. Okay, so I chased these uh, these two studs with the little die. Ding, ding, ding. It's a 5 16 uh, fine thread. So that cleaned up nicely. I was putting away the remnants of this kit and I decided to do something a little bit thrifty. I ended up having some, um, some gasket material on hand and I already traced out the uh, bowl gasket and another intake gasket so that, you know, I got another forklift that I'm gonna have to put together at some point. Instead of buying another kit, I already traced out this guy here, ding. So we put that in the box for next time. And this guy over here, it's already pre-traced. So I'll know what to do with it. Uh, when we get to that point, let's get this carb on that forklift. Oil up our gasket a little so it has better adherence. No, not adherence, just so it kind of smushes into place. I always like to oil up, especially these big thick ones. Get them nice and, get them nice and juicy. That way there, they, they sandwich in nice. Get that on the carb. And we'll try to get that governor in first. 
I don't think there's a lot of room to fit this carbon. Um, I think the governor went up top. You guys remember that skimpy little cotter pin? I got a new one. Brand spanking new. No expenses spared, folks. Get this guy in first. Okay. Get this this press fit carburetor in here. Get that starter, it really just barely slides in. Get this package out of the way. Come on. It was a little more cooperative during rehearsal. There we go. Okay, and just so it doesn't uh, come undone like last time, we're going to be putting some lock washers on there. Okay. If you notice, the, uh, the intake manifold, even this part of the block is all nice and clean now. I, uh, I took the liberty of washing it down with a little bit of Arsol. The same stuff that I was soaking the carbs in, I ended up filtering it out and keeping it because it was, you know, still good. So use it as kind of like a degreasing solvent. You know, you just get a paintbrush and I just brushed it down. I'm on a tarp right now because it's got a pretty bad hydraulic leak. That's something we'll have to address in a in a future video. But um, yeah, that's it. So you know, while it was on the tarp and it's all kind of dirty underneath, I figured I'd get the paintbrush out and clean behind where the carbs gonna be because uh, I'm not gonna have as good of an access and it's always fun having a cleaner engine you know and you you don't have all that stinky stuff burning off and you know makes the engine you know the engine doesn't actually run any better but it just kind of seems like it's better because it's not they're making these horrible stinky fumes and everything so yeah right. finish tightening these bolts up here Strange thing is they use, uh, this stud is basically, a, I think it's a 5 16 but the top is fine thread. Like what I'm doing now, these are fine thread nuts, and uh, this, this part of the stud is fine thread, but what threads into the carburetor seems like it's 5 16 coarse thread. So it makes it a little more complicated. If we were to break a stud or something, you'd have to, I don't know, you know I'm guessing you can buy them, but, you know, or you'd have to make your own. Uh, the fact that it's, you know, I think you can easily find fine thread or coarse thread studs, but mixed combo studs, not too sure, not too sure how available that is. So if you recall from the previous video, this, uh, this throttle linkage, I think has like a quick, you know, a quick disconnect, you know, you'd probably press this in and you could pull it out, it's like a little ball joint, but uh, unfortunately it's all seized up. And uh, I just ended up unscrewing it from the uh, from the throttle uh, lever, so yeah, we'll just screw it back in. I'm not gonna waste too much time trying to get this guy unseized. You know, it's like a finicky little part to begin with, so that's good. So carrying along in the project, up next there is the choke, uh, I guess pull knob or what is completely seized. So what I did was I ended up ordering another one. Uh, there's a whole bunch of models out there. I wanted one that kind of fit with the style of this 1960s era. So I decided to go with one that was all chrome. And uh, a lot of them, I think some of them were round and they were chrome, but they said, I don't know what they said on them. They might've said Edelbrock or something on them. And I didn't want that. So I ended up going, I had to go with the T-handle. So see what it looks like over here but it's all it's like a metal construction so it's kind of a, a decent I'll call it a decent quality and uh, the T handle I think is going to give it a bit of a cool style that's going to kind of fit with the old school dash so uh, let's go ahead and put that in so I ended up cutting the uh, the choke cable to the correct length I just ended up uh, looking at the old one and, and matching it up perfectly and then cutting off the 
the, the, I guess the, the shroud and the wire. I left myself a couple inches longer on the wire and I can trim that once I get to the carb, this guy over here. Um, at least I won't have a long, you know, these things, this is like a universal cable. So, I mean, it's a little bit too long, which is fine. Uh, it's just a good idea to kind of cut it to the right length so that you don't have this big, long, this big, long cable just kind of poorly passed or hanging around. So, get this guy through here. Good. And we'll leave it, we'll leave it a little bit loose for now. And we'll put her on properly later. All right, so I got the choke cable fished all the way to the back and uh, reinstalled it into the choke lever, at least the, uh, the wire part. And now we're gonna go ahead and put the um, clamp on the, um, on this casing or housing or whatever you call it, a little shroud. This guy goes on like this. I noticed that the that the screw was um, chewed up right where it right where it ends up fastening. Like the the tip of the threads were good, but the end was kind of well the the part where it ends up tightening was kind of scrappy. So we'll put a brand new one on. We can afford it. We can afford it. Try to get our little fingers, our grubby little fingers back there to tighten it in. If we can get it finger tight, then I can maybe get some tools in there to, to get it to, to hold. So choke when it's back is fully uh, open. That's right. And then as you pull up on the, on the lever, the choke lever, you guys in frame here? There we go. You pull up on the lever, cling, this guy comes back. So we got enough clearance over here. We, we can even go a little bit further out. That's good enough. And then tighten it on to its final location. Perfect. Good. And now we tighten up the actual choke um, lever onto the, onto the little pull wire. Almost. Good. Let's see if that works. Wonderful. Nice and tight. Perfect. Um, remember this old guy, the painted tank. So uh, we got to get a gasket made up for that fuel uh, gauge unit and put the fittings back on and then get it back into that forklift. This is the box of different parts that we got. I think the fuel, that fuel unit's in there. We'll check it out electrically and see if it works. And uh, you know, we'll do that right away while we still have this nifty little setup that I can do. So uh, we'll get that fuel unit checked out. We'll cut out the gasket, then we'll assemble and reinstall. We're getting there, folks, we're getting there. Ta-da, okay. So this is the fuel um, gauge or level float. Uh, probably has a little, I don't know, potentiometer in here activated by the float. When it goes up and down, it ends up moving, I guess, a little brush on a variable resistor and then sends that electrically, um, basically sends, well, it doesn't actually send anything electrically. It's just really just a variable resistance. I think I have no idea. I'm just saying anything, but, um, and then this over here, as this guy varies, um, this is probably grounded also, so it's got to have a ground, I'm assuming, and then it sends this off to the, the fuel gauge. So let's remove this and see if I am right. Get our trusty multimeter out. And we're going to go on 
I guess ohms, checking continuity will make it so it beeps. If we have a complete circuit, boom, it'll beep. So let's, I don't know, we'll just try something here. This and this. Yep. So we have 40 uh, ohms, and then let's see if we vary this. Whoops, see, we're going down. What's the lowest here? Hold on, hold on, funny business. All right, let's try to get some better connections going here, because now we know, I think we know that that's how it's supposed to work. This is probably a nice, clean ground. Let's try it like this and like this, okay? You know what, now that we know that it beeps, <laughs> let's turn that off. So if we vary it, yep, there we go. So the lowest uh, point, I guess when the tank would be empty, because imagine this is this guy's up at the top. So this is when it's totally at the bottom. We're at, call it what, five ohms, you know, four point something. So that, and then, yeah, very sensitive. And then as it starts coming up, our maximum is, and the high, well, mid, no, oh, there we go, 30, 40, and then we go here. It actually goes back down a little, not too sure. But it does, in fact, seem to be working, at least, you know, it's varying a resistance. So we'll see if we hook it up to a, uh, gas gauge if it actually works. All right, so the sun's not being very cooperative, kind of giving me a bit of a, a glare, but what can I do? Not much. So now the paint's dry on this guy. Um, we're gonna go reinstall it. I noticed that the gasket uh, that I made for it here, uh, I ended up just drilling out the holes with a drill. I don't have a small enough punch uh, to get that done. Um, 
one of the holes is offset slightly, meaning that this guy has a direction. I think it has to go in this way. And what I did was I ended up grinding a little bit of paint off because if you remember my test, I grounded my tester and I'm not sure if there has to be a ground by putting this gasket. I think I'm going to eliminate the continuity and the only thing connecting the tank to this thing is going to be the bolts. And with the fresh coat of paint, I was just worried that, um, that it would cause me issues and I don't want to, I don't want to have to take this back apart again. So let's check and make sure, um, that I line up that double, that double hole. Okay. It's very, very subtle. So hence why I'm having a hard time finding it now. Is it this guy? Yup. Okay. So now that we know how it goes in, or now that we know how we took it out, it's easier to put it in. In you go. Back into your home, little guy. Okay. And that is that. I uh, These are the original uh, bolts, but one was broken, so I had to drill and tap and remove it. So I got brand new. Um, I stayed with the flathead. You know, normally I like putting... Um, other types of heads. Flathead is one of my least favorite uh, heads, but you know, in order to try to stay with a somewhat original uh, restoration, I decided to go with the flatheads, but they are stainless steel. Not that it makes a big difference, but I guess it'll be there long after I'm gone. And that is that. Let's uh, let's find the fitting that goes on here, and I think I got some new ones also for that. Okay, so I thought that I had uh, five sixteenths, one quarter um, barb fittings, but I don't. I only have this one quarter, one quarter, or I have three eighths, one quarter. I'm gonna wait to get the proper five sixteenths because I want it to fit properly on my fuel line, but I do have this uh, elbow. I can go ahead and install it. Um, normally I'd use, I guess, Teflon tape, but in this case, we can use this paste that I rarely use. It's like a thread sealer because you gotta let it set up uh, 24 hours. But we're gonna have time because I don't have all the parts. So we can go ahead and install that. have it point uh, towards the back which is where we're going to be routing up the fuel line all right so as you can see tank is fully reassembled i didn't paint that gas cap because i don't know what color i'm going to paint the forklift so i'm going to leave that guy just unpainted for now the black tank is really just so it's well protected and we don't really see it. Uh, it's hidden away. I converted this, um, this barb fitting to 5 16ths because the one quarter that was on there, uh, all my gas line that I have in stock here is most, well, pretty much all 5 16ths, my filters, all that stuff. So I think that's a little bit more standard for myself. So let's get that guy back into the beast. So I tried about a hundred different ways to get a, a decent shot of getting this tank on, but just not enough access and I need both my arms in there. I'm all by myself. So I got those two bolts back on, had to take the, um, the fuel cap off and that would have rolled off somewhere. Where are you? 
Where did it go? Uh, okay, we'll have to find that and then screw it back on, but fuel tank reinstalled. So I got the, uh, the fuel hose. Um, there's injector hose and then there's just regular fuel system hose. And because this guy's not under high pressure, you can get the cheaper, um, just regular fuel line. I mean, this is still good stuff. I think it's made in the States and, uh, you know, it's not just the cheapest hose, but you can get, instead of paying the premium for the pressure rated, you can just get the regular stuff. Then I like getting proper clips. Um, let's take a look at what these guys look like here, but just instead of hose clamps, uh, these are actual stainless steel. You know, they, they fully um, envelope the hose properly. You don't have the, you don't have the screw chewing up the hose. You know, I mean, if you can spare, like they're probably about a buck a piece, but anyways, they're well worth it. And then uh, fuel filter, um, just a regular transparent 5 16 end fuel filter, all kinds of different brands out there. Um, and these you got to watch out there's a direction you got to look at the arrow so you make sure that your fuel is flowing in the right direction in this case from left to right so let's go ahead and install that oh yeah one more thing um originally the fuel filter uh was way down at the bottom right next to the outlet of the tank this guy uh as you've seen maybe in the other video if you've watched it the mechanical fuel pump was condemned and uh, this is the electric fuel pump that was installed and there is a check valve over here um, the check valve is gonna keep the gas I guess you know all the way from the uh, from the carburetor to the pump but normally I'd like to see this check valve closer towards the tank and then the filter uh, well, you know, if you want to protect your check valve, you can put the filter before it. In our case, I'm not going to take this off. I'm going to leave it there, but I'm going to put my filter somewhere around over here uh, so that it, um, so it's easier to change when I do my maintenance on it. So, uh, so let's pass a line, a gas line from the tank all the way up to here and get that fuel filter in. And, well, that's it. Okay, so very much harder than it looks. Um, this guy was installed. Um, I should have maybe put the fuel line on the gas tank before I put the gas tank up, but uh, that's, I got this little hole, this little space between the tire when it's fully turned and uh, and in there. So uh, anyways, I got to do that. That was fun. Um, I have a hunch these counterweights on the side, if they came off, would give me quite a bit more room. But uh, anyways, that's, that's going to be for another time. Um, fuel line's coming up, still hooked up to the main reel, haven't cut it yet. Uh, I noticed that there's a little clip. You see that right over here? Yeah, so there's a clip that's already there. I might try to clip it into there, and then I gotta loop it back around. I gotta make sure that it doesn't come in contact with anything hot, anything that moves, and then uh, have it come up over here. Uh, we'll basically come up to a filter and then come up and then loop onto there. So I'll see how I do that, and I'll, uh, I'll let you guys see when I'm done. Okay, just finishing up the final tightening so uh, if you can see we're hooked up here I, uh, I ended up moving the fuel filter instead of having it kind of uh, vertical over here I ended up just having it down here and then once it's you know I'll figure out a way to maybe get it to to be a little bit closer to the side but you know if it dangles that's okay it's not really in anything's way it's not touching up against anything and uh, for now I mean we'll see we'll get the thing started like this and then if we have to make any adjustments or modifications we'll do so at a later date so you know what they say, all good fuel stories start at the pump. So we're going to hook up this, uh, this fuel line to the pump and make our way down to our newly rebuilt carburetor. Yes, sir. Good. We're going to loop around over here. Um, going towards the carb and uh, you know originally there was a clamp over here on that rigid line so we're going to replace it with this um, this kind of clamp that has the little rubber uh, little rubber I don't know protector on it and it's metal so I have to oversize the hole because it's a uh, it's a 5 16 bolt and I lost the bolt I don't know I took it off before and uh, can't really find it amidst all this mess so um, this is at least going to kind of fix it in place and uh, make sure that it doesn't wiggle around. 
unwantingly. So let's get that bolt in here and then clamp it on. Uh, this area is also the, uh, or this, this connector is also the negative uh, ground, or it's the ground off the engine. So we'll clean that up. And then there's also this electrical wire that kind of comes along here. And once I do the video on the electrical, uh, I guess, overhaul on this machine, I'll probably put a second clamp kind of like this towards the bottom and, and also hook it on there. So it'll be sort of a central location for a lot of fixation. Perfect. And the gas hose loops around here. Uh, I found that the best routing, uh, you know, the original hose kind of came up here like this. It was rigid and it came along the back. And then this, this nipple over here was at, I guess, 90 degrees and it was facing right towards the block. So now I angled it downwards and then that allowed me to bring the hose kind of down behind the starter over here and then back up from the back and we'll come and connect it in over here. So the hose is gonna be out of the way, uh, kind of down there. It might be a little bit cooler. You know, I have to watch out, there's an exhaust. You know, the exhaust pipe is over here and uh, I didn't wanna have it in the way. So I'm routing it downwards. It's not gonna be rubbing on anything and I'm gonna come back up and connect it over here. Perfect. So gas tank, check. All the fuel lines, check. Tested the pump, new filter, rebuilt carburetor, new choke lever, all completed. I think that pretty much wraps up our fuel system uh, overhaul. I think it's time to try to see if this guy will start following all this work. So I made a little video uh, just uh, a little while back on um, refurbishing old batteries with my new carbon pile uh, battery tester. You guys can go check that out. This is one of those refurbished batteries. We'll see if it we'll see if it gives us enough juice to start this guy up. So it looks like it's running. I'm gonna go open up the garage door and uh, get some, you know, get some adjustments on it. But uh, so far, so good. Doesn't look like it's leaking. It's smoking a bit because I did shoot some oil into the cylinders, and you know, hasn't ran in probably about four or five months. So, uh, all right, let's go. All right. So first thing I want to do is get the idle uh, a little bit higher. That's a little better. It sounds like my hydraulic pump is forcing a bit. I have a hunch, maybe it's just my... There we go. So, so we'll try to get the load off the hydraulics. The uh, the tire would have been turned, and I guess the, uh, you know, the load was on the hydraulic pump. I can kind of hear it wheezing away, so that's not too bad. And uh, let's check and see this idle, uh, this idle mixture screw. Turn it in. Okay, so now that's riding a little rougher. Now we're gonna turn it out.
So we don't have an air filter on it. I haven't figured that part out yet. So, uh, you know, I guess we'll leave some of the final adjustments for when we have an air filter on it. And uh, I don't have a tachometer, so I can't really get this engine dialed in. It's supposed to be at about 500 or 550 RPM at idle. It might be idling a little fast now. Let's check and see if we can go a little bit slower. Um, trying not to burn myself here. Sure doesn't stall on idle. Give it a bit of gas. So I can see the governor rods working, so I think it's doing its job. Let's see if I can get my hand out here. Thing. Let's uh, let's turn the steering wheel and see if that governor is moving around as the engine forces a little. Yeah, I guess at idle it's kind of handling it, but all right. So that looks like it's working. see if it starts back up nicely. Wonderful! kind of making little backfires, little pops, and uh, once we go through the uh, the engine's electrical system, maybe we'll sort out points, condenser, stuff like that. Maybe I'll put new spark plugs in it, we'll see. But uh, so far, so far it seems like we're off to a good start. Let's, uh, let's see if we can clean this place up and get it out for its first run in a couple months. that's it folks another video complete alice chalmers fuel system rebuild very satisfied with the results running well so i took it outside i was able to take out these old boat motors i'm going to store them in my yard so i hope you enjoyed this video stay tuned for the next one signing out